Okay, welcome back. Now let's continue with our discussion in chapter five. I'm gonna make a brief uh, correction on this in this example. Uh, the picture was a little bit off because the second time after you turn this, what will happen is that the um, connection will look like this. The second time in the second period, it will look like this. Okay, so just a pictorial uh, correction here. Okay. Oh, okay. I hope you heard me before now. So I just made this correction here. Um, just make sure you have the correct version also. Okay. Uh, now let's think about the power of frequency modulated or phase modulated uh, signals. Power of angle modulated wave. Now, okay, so we said that the amplitude doesn't change, right? So when you do angle modulation, either FM or PM, the phase modulation, uh, the amplitude does not change. Okay, amplitude remains constant. And frequency changes in time. Well, maybe we should say instantaneous frequency changes in time. So the power is actually uh, is going to be the same as a pure sinusoid. So the power always is a square over 2. And amplitude is always equal to a. So amplitude equal to a. Then the power of an FM or PM signal is going to be always a square over 2 regardless of the amount of modulation kp or kf the values of kp and kf are irrelevant here okay uh, actually now uh, i'm going to discuss a little bit about the bandwidth of angle modulated waves and then we're going to finish i'm not going to mm, take too long here uh, bandwidth of angle modulated waves Uh, let me take a break here, a short break. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay, I am back. Let's continue. I got a phone call, so I had to stop for a while. Okay, uh, how to calculate the bandwidth of an angle modulated wave? It's 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 tricky. It's not really uh, trivial. Um, so let's define. To do this analysis of bandwidth, let's define A of t, which is the integral minus infinity to t of our message signal m alpha d alpha. Okay. Now I can define a complex signal phi hat fm of t, where the real part of the signal is going to be the fm. So omega omega c t plus kf a of t right so this is my uh the the real part of this is gonna gonna be the fm signal so phi fm of t is going to be the real part of phi hat fm of t i think this is very easy to see you just use the euler's formula for the exponential complex exponential there Okay, so uh, yeah, this you can write like e to the j omega c t times e to the j k f a t. Now, we can do a power series expansion of this term here. Okay, the power series expansion of e to the j k f a of t. And let's see how it looks. Okay, and this is important for the bandwidth analysis. Okay, so phi hat fm t is going to be a times. So I'm gonna do the power uh, ex series expansion one plus. So we are doing the power series expansion of e to the x. So it's like one plus x plus 
uh, x squared over 2 factorial uh, plus and so on okay that that so 1 plus j k f a of t plus j squared which is minus 1 k f uh, 1 over 2 times k f square a square t okay plus dot 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 plus the nth term like looks like this j to the n k f to the n divided by n factorial times a to the n of t plus dot 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 up to infinity right times e to the j omega c t it's still there okay now uh, if you take the real part of this so phi f m of t is going to be the real part of this phi hat f m of t as we said before what you get is such a signal uh, a times okay a cosine omega c t this is the first term because we get e to the g omega c t there plus uh, so okay second term is minus minus a k f a of t sine omega c t okay, because you get the j there and so on okay minus a times again kf square a square t cosine omega c t over 2 things like that and there are plus more terms plus that 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 okay so now if you think about this uh, what is the bandwidth of this signal now if you think about this what is the band we should think about what's the bandwidth of a of t right so what is a of t you take m of t and push it through an integrator and then you get a of t right so here remember we defined a of t as being the integral so this is the definition here uh, so if m of t has a bandwidth p then what should be the bandwidth of a of t Well, it would still be B because it's a linear time invariant system there. So what is the impulse response uh, here? It's U of T. And what is the frequency response? If you want, E, e to the J, uh, sorry, H of J omega. Um, I mean, I'm just going to write H of F. Here the frequency response H of F is going to be 1 over J to pi F. So... So it is a linear uh, time invariant system, so it doesn't really change the bandwidth. We can argue that it doesn't change the bandwidth. So it is still, this A of T is still uh, band limited to uh, B. But now if you look at this expression here, you get A of T, A square of T, and then other terms, there will be A to the N of T. So there will be like such a term where you will have A N of T. But then there will be a division of by N factorial in front of it, okay? So what is the bandwidth of each term here? So a square t, what's the bandwidth of a square t? Has 2b bandwidth, okay? And that, 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 up to a to the n of t has n times b bandwidth. So the bandwidth keeps growing, right, in these terms. So each term has a higher bandwidth. But the good news is that, so if you if you really cannot ignore all these terms, then you get bandwidth of infinity. So for uh, if we cannot ignore all terms, then you will get bandwidth of infinity. But the good news, as I said, but good news, these uh, higher order terms are small. Higher order terms are small due to division by n factorial okay so we are we can still uh, think that it is uh, there is a band uh, band so 
what is the band here so in in uh, okay if you ignore this second order term starting from the second order term if you ignore that what you get is again again a bandwidth of b okay so so let's uh, so this uh, also depends on how big your kf is as well so we say in the case of a narrow band frequency modulation okay happens if this kf times a of t again remember a of t is the integral of the message signal is much much smaller than 1 if this this magnitude is really small then terms after kf squared h squared t can be ignored can be ignored they are very small i mean they just vanish vanish to zero okay so you can just ignore them what happens if after that then you can say that your phi fm of t becomes in the narrow band case it is approximately a cosine omega c t minus a k f a of t sine omega c t all right so so this is your carrier signal and this is a weird uh, a 2b bandwidth signal right 2b bandwidth signal because a of t has a bandwidth of b and after modulation remember we modulate after modulation we get uh, the bandwidth increases twice so we get a 2b bandwidth signal so in this case the the bandwidth of the fm signal is similar to the am signal and the expression here is very similar to uh, so in similar to am in the narrow band case if you have this term really small kf a of t very small then we get something similar to am but but not exactly of course we are not doing am here we are doing fm and and we are not really changing the amplitude and this is an approximation remember this this is not exact equality it's an approximation so similar to am in terms of bandwidth i would just say in terms of bandwidth use bandwidth use okay and um, but in the case of wideband uh, which means like in, when this kf times a of t cannot be ignored uh, then we get higher bandwidth then in that case uh, we will consider uh, after this point so this is the end of the lecture of uh, this week and I wish you good luck in your uh, other lectures and also in the recitation that will take place on Friday and in two different hours okay the, so the second the third lecture hour will be used for recitation also next week on the dates of let me show you the calendar here so on the 7th of december you will have two hours of recitation one in the regular recitation hour and one in the afternoon uh, lecture hour okay and then i will be back hopefully uh, the next the following week and then we will uh, carry on from this point after i come back okay see you and study well bye bye